My name is Aaron. This is 3D Studio Max 2016 Basic Texture Mapping. Okay, so when you're in 3D Studio Max, what I would like you guys to do is to go look at your perspective window right here. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to create a brick wall, a very simple brick wall, and I'm going to enlarge this using the bottom right hand tool here. I'm going to create a box under the Create tab box, and I'm going to drag a box out like this, and I'm just going to drag up. The height and width do not matter at this moment right now, but I just want to share with you that you can edit this using the Modify tool, and you can sort of adjust the width and height of this box as needed uh, to create your realistic uh, brick wall. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to center this block using the Move tool and right-clicking my X, Y, and Z coordinates, so that way it's in the center of our scene. Now when it comes to texturing this wall right here, there's a couple different methods, but the easiest method that I like to do is to go to Google searches. And what I like to do is I'm going to go switch to my Google here. And in the search wall, you want to type in brick wall texture or you know barrel texture or floor texture or something texture is the key word here. Once you have that, you want to make sure that you in the search tools, you want to look under large larger than 1024 by 768. Make sure it's larger. You don't want a small image. So in this example, I'm going to take this example here of this brick wall and as it's loading uh, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to go save image as. Save image as. And I can do it by saving and moving it to my desktop for now and I can call it uh, that. Or I could actually go down and I can minimize this and drag it to the wall. There's two different ways that are to do that, so it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Once you have that down, the next thing is to do is to go into Photoshop. Okay, You want to make sure you're in Photoshop and you want to open up that document or that file that was saved on your desktop. So scrolling down, looking for the brick wall texture. Here it is. We want to open up the brick wall texture. You'll notice right here on the right hand side there's a lock icon. You have to disable this lock icon and in order to do that you have to press the alt key down hold it down and double tap that and that way it'll unlock the, the, um, the item there. The next thing you're going to do is now that this item is saved there's three different types. You want to create a highlight of the wall there's the bump textures of the wall and then there's also a specular map of the wall where the light is reflecting back from this. So right now we have our first part of three and this is already done so what we're going to do is we're going to go to file save as and we're going to navigate to our desktop computer and we're going to go to our projects folder images and we're going to go to textures and then we're going to go to uh, bricks and in this case we have a, a one that's called brick wall we'll just call it this for now and hit save and save again now to do the bump map textures the bump map is using black and white images. Low for receding images and high white for higher uh, images, uh, levels if you will. Try to think of it as if you're looking at a mountain. The mountain top has ice on top which is white and snow and stuff like that so it's at a higher elevation, evolution, evolution. and then um, a dark de deeps are a lot deeper like in the uh, ocean for example it gets darker as you go deeper in the ocean. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to brightness and contrast and what we're going to do is we're going to take the contrast out. Uh, excuse me, no, not brightness and contrast, excuse me, it's going to be um, adjustments, hue and saturation, excuse me, we're going to take the saturation levels down and basically make it a black and white image. You can click black and white, but the saturation is really what you want. So we're going to take this and we're going to go save as, and this time we're going to go back to our folder, we're going to go into 3D Studio Max, images, textures, bricks, and we're going to save this as a PNG. Keep in mind, you don't want to save it as a, anything else but that. Let's rename, rename this um, bump, B-U-M-P, okay, bump map, and hit OK. The next thing we need to do is we need to save out as a specular. So now we have two of the three images saved. We're going to go to Images, Adjustments, and we're going to go to Levels. Now here is you're going to see your Levels uh, map here, and you're going to take your darks here and then your lights here. What we're going to do is we're going to try to bring this down and then we're going to bring the lights in a little bit so you can see the, the, the reflection of when the camera took the flash what's actually reflecting back at the camera lens and if you go too dark you're going to get too, too rich of an area or if you go too white it's going to bla blow out the image so we've got to keep a happy medium of this so that way we kind of get something that's relatively like this so that way you can see the darks you can see the whites here, the reflections 
and it's going to vary per image that you work on. Once you do that, you hit OK. We're going to go to Image, Save As Again, and go down to PNG. Make sure you go to your um, 3D Studio Max folder, your Images folder. Make sure you go to your Textures and your Bricks folder. And we're going to rename this one, and we're going to call it uh, spec specular. specular. Okay. Now, once you do that, we no longer need Photoshop. We're going to minimize that. And what you're going to see here, just to show you um, what you're going to do, you're going to go to your 3D Studio Max. You're going to go to Images, Textures, Bricks. And you're going to see the, the images that we just created. Okay. These are the images. This is the image number one. This is the bump map image in black and white. And you have your specular. Notice each three images is a little bit different from one another. Now, in 3D Studio Max, right here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Material Editor. You can go there by pressing M on your keyboard or pressing the icon here. In this Slate Editor, you might be in this mode or you might be in the Compact Editor. Personally, I like to be in the Slate Editor mode right here, and it's a lot easier to work with because there's a lot more to see. In the left hand side here, you can see your materials, you can see your maps, mental ray, etc. The main one we're going to work with right now is our standard map. We're going to drag that out here. And by double tapping this icon, you can see that you can see the texture icon here. So, how do we get an image to apply on here? Well, we need a bitmap. And you can take the bitmap and drag it out. And it's going to ask you, where do you want your images? So, if we go back, we're going to go to Computer, Images, 3ds Max, Images, Textures, Bricks and we're going to look for the first one called brick. Once we hit OK, you'll see the bitmap for the brick that shows up here. This icon, this image, is going to go and be attached to this uh, diffuse color. When you attach it to there, you will see that it shows up on there, right? Now, uh, you may be asking, well, how, how, do, how do I attach this to my, uh, my texture mapping? And I'm just going to bring this over so you can see this at the same time. The easiest way to do that is to basically take this way, and you can drag this and this will attach to here like that or you can go down and you can uh, click the um, where is it attach you gotta select your material attach to material which is this one assign material to selection that's the same thing you can do it here or you can drag this icon to there it's the same thing now once you do that you'll notice it's black and white it doesn't show up in your view editor the reason being is because you gotta make sure that you turn on shaded material view and viewport right here the little light bulb icon and make sure that you are on this icon versus this one. Watch what if I you got to double click on this so that way you're on this one. So it takes all the final outputs from all of here, goes into here, and it shows up in there. So by turning this on, you'll be able to see your brick wall texture on here. Now we have our basic image. It looks okay if we go if we go into this view and we were to render this out by hitting F9 on the keyboard. You can see it's not so bad. I mean, it's, uh, let me sort of get this a little closer for you. Um, it's not terrible. I mean, you can see it. It's, it's Something's wrong over here on, the, on the, the edges here, and we can fix that. But as you can see, it's not terrible. But we can enhance it and using the other two pictures that we have here, using the bump map and the specular map. That's also going to be attached here. So how do we do that? We're going to go back to bitmap drag another one in here and we're going to go to the bump map and the bump is going to be black and white hit OK and the bump map is obviously going to be put to the bump texture and come on bump texture you'll see a little bit of bump map ha happening in there which is going to be great and then we're going to do one more for the specular map right here so the specular set here and we're going to go to gloss. I'm going to pause this video for right now and you can see this has a nice reflection. Okay guys, I'm back. I'm sorry about that delay there. Alright, so what's happening here is we're adding the specular map to the bump map texture here, which as you can see has added some extra highlights to the wall here and added some depth. If you want to, you can click on the material editor here and you can see the specular levels here, the glossiness levels depending on what type of wall you want and or if you go under the different types of parameters that are down here for the bump map settings you can extend under the map section you can go under bumps and increase the value of those bumps so let's let's say I do like 80 you'll see the texture map start to change here as well as you know the specular levels the glossiness levels etc so when I hit F9 on my keyboard 
or hit the render panel here, you will see, hopefully, uh, you will see a more realistic look of the wall that is here. Now keep in mind, you see some crazy things that are going on that are a little bit different here. Notice you see that this top here, this top panel is a little bit messed up. Well, we can correct that in uh, 3D Studio Max, and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, the easiest way to correct that is to get out of the, 3D, the, the panel here. And what we're going to do here is under the Modify tab, first got to click on your object you want to work with. Under the Modify tab, if you go to the area down here and scroll all the way down to you see UVW Maps. Okay, UVW Maps. Once you have UVW Maps, it's going to get blown out of proportion. It's okay. You're going to select the item that's listed here that represents the shape that you're working with. In this case, it's a box shape. And then we can go here and what basically this does is it creates a map and we can create the different types of shapes here. So you can stretch the image out, you can uh, set the length of this and that's what we're going to do is you can set the length to match as best you can the, the brick shapes that are, uh, are part of you know the wall here. And you can obviously tile it and you can move it around, do all sorts of things like that. Keep in mind, you're going to watch out for these seams that are right there. I don't know if you guys see that, but you can, there's a seam in the wall right here, right before the, the picture repeats itself. So be aware of those type of things when creating a wall texture. You want to try to find something that is called a seamless texture. So it, it, seem, you know, it matches it clearly from one object to the other. And, uh, but for demonstration purposes, I just wanted to share with you that you can adjust the height of these, scale them down, go smaller. Um, and change this here to, to represent the images for the, uh, the top there and sort of make that look a little bit better. It's an optical illusion. This is exactly how you would create different types of textures for your floor, for a barrel, for maybe a ball or something like that. Now, um, I'm going to make another video on how to do spheres and make sure that they look correct in, uh, versus pinching and I'm going to explain that to you in a little bit. But basically, long story short, you need to go to Google you need to find an image of brick textures or whatever you want, something textures. You need to go into Photoshop and you need to make sure that you save the image out as a bump map using the adjustments and you're going to do hue and saturation, bring all the saturation down, all the way down and then you want to make sure you go to your, um, uh, come on, where is it? You're going to go to adjustments and you're going to go to uh, the levels. Uh, actually brightness and contrast and then bring your levels down to uh, show your specular highlights and then you add them all into 3D Studio Max and you get a nice looking wall and a nice looking texture now there's a lot more to go with this stuff and texture mapping there's a whole career path in this field if you're interested in that just keep working on adding textures to make things look real more realistic as you can stack them and keep going with that wishing you all the best of luck my name's Aaron this is 3D Studio Max 2016 basic texturing 101 thank you